Hey, what's good, y'all? Um, I know I come in here all the time and I talk to you guys about, you know, relationships. I talk to you guys about things that you should do, things that you should fix, things that you should, uh, you should not deal with, you know, I, everything, right? I want to open up to you guys about me. I want to ex express to you guys what I feel real pain is, right? My whole life, um, I wanted to be a professional basketball player. My whole life, that's what I wanted to be, you know? And uh, I worked hard for it. I worked hard for it. I didn't play until my junior year of high school. And when I did, I was like 5'9", 5'10". I led every category, points, assists. I was second in rebound and first in steal. I, like, I, I played my behind off. Um, Leaving my high school, I didn't have not one scholarship. Um, I, I sat out a year or two, I believe. Um, I got held back. You know, I was I was BSing in classes. I, I sat uh, I sat out of school. I was uh, taking care of my mom, working a little bit more, and then um, I went to Bronx Community College out here in New York City. Uh, we won three championships, and I was. I broke records there as well. It's like, it's like April, May, I don't have a scholarship. I don't have nothing. No school has called me, no nothing. Local schools, local division three schools, but no school outside of the state. My heart is broken, bro, broken. You know, so I'm at school working out. Um, I, get a call, I get a phone call it's from a school in Kentucky. They want to give me a full ride scholarship. You know, I go over into the corner, I start crying, I'm, I'm thankful. I go out, Kentucky happens. Kentucky doesn't work out, I come back home. I stay home for a year. West Virginia happens, I go to Salem International. You know, and you know, I've played basketball, it's, it has taken me across the world. I have played against professional basketball players. I have played and gotten paid for it. I have had my opportunities to play basketball. But I never got that big break. I never got that NBA contract. You want to know what's what's a heartbreak? A heartbreak is seeing people that has played professionally that are not better than you. Um, and I'm saying, I'm trust me, I'm saying this in the most humbling way. It's unbelievable seeing people play at a professional level that's not better than me. I don't know their situation. I don't know what they did to get these contracts. But to know that you played against this person, you gave this person 30 points, 40 points, 50 points. Like, like, when I was in West Virginia, I worked out so much. I worked out so hard that I was diagnosed with OTS, overtraining syndrome. I worked out so hard and so much that my body started to attack itself because I was working out too much and not allowing myself to rest. I would go to the gym and make 3,000 jump shots, make that shoot. I would make 3,000 jump shots. I would, I, would, I would eat proper. Then I would come in and hoop. I would go to sleep and I'll be sleeping and my mom would be like, yo, you sleeping too long. Let's wake up at 4 a.m. Go knock out another 3,000. I made 100,000 jump shots in seven months. I worked out so hard because I was so close and I was at the top of my game. And like I was taking off. My body looked good. You know, my mental was good. And it just, it just never, it never clicked for me. You know, I went to pro combines and, and Vegas and Virginia and, uh, and Germany and, and DR. Like I've, I've been all over the place and I played and I just never got that break for them to be like, yo, we, you're the person that we won this whole time. Do you know what kind of heartbreak it is? Is that your best isn't good enough for their worst? For me to have go to the NBA D League um, tryouts and average 21 points at five assists, and for them not to pick me up for that, I'm playing full court defense. I'm diving on the floor. I'm rolling around. I'm doing, I'm doing everything known to man, and it's still not clicking. It's like yo, like what, <laughs> what do I have to do? You know, I said it before. Like how many more people do I have to kill? And I think that's heartbreaking. Is that you know I'm still hooping. And then, like, I'll get a little injury. Like, right now, I have a knee injury. And my mind is like, no, you can't have a knee injury right now. Not right now. I've been telling myself that I've been so close for so many years that it feels like, okay, 
come on. Like, do you understand how hard it is? That that's the only thing I envision myself as, as an NBA player. And I haven't even had the chance to, to play against the top NBA players. Like, I've played against a few NBA players, but not on that stage, not in front of those bright lights. Like, even when I'm playing games now, I still get nervous. I still get a little worried because, you know, I want to perform. All this time and effort that I put in, I want to be show, you know, I want to show up. But it's crazy because it just feels like, like it just hasn't happened, like it's not going to happen. A real heartbreak is I've sacrificed relationships with decent females because basketball is what I pursued. And don't get me wrong, like, it was the best thing that happened to me, but I sometimes think back to, like, I wonder if they're laughing at me because I didn't get it, because it didn't click for me. You know, I wonder all the people that believed in me, all the people that doubted me and saying, like, yeah, hmm, you know, he never got that. I used to run up and down the court hundreds and hundreds of times. I used to lift the whole gym trying to trying to show like this is what I want to do. It's like a real heartbreak. A real heartbreak is when you go to one of these professional combines, you lead your team in scoring, you lead your team in assists. You got have the best record in the tournament and they don't pick you for all first team, all second team, or you don't get MVP. But players that didn't even average Half of the points that you average, half of the steals that you average, half of the rebounds that you average get picked over you because they came from big time schools. A real heartbreak? It's going after something that you believed in so hard. Like you believed in it so much that it, was, it felt like it was God sent, you know? Like you hear the statistics, like, oh, this person can't make it, this person can't make it. But you're like, not me. Like, you're not talking to me. I never really doubted the basketball aspect of that basketball field and stuff like that. But, but recently I was like, you know, should I even go to these G League trials that I have coming up? Should I even really attempt to, to pursue this dream? Should I just go YouTube full time, be inspirational, be... Say, but I'm passionate about ball. I'm passionate about YouTube. You know, I want to show the hardships and the struggles and the difficulties. I want to show it. It's just some things that you just, some things I just can't understand. I just can't. It's hard. I used to want to get into fights that people ever said to me before, like, oh, you want to make it to the NBA. I've dunked on people that said, like, you would not make it to the NBA. <laughs> like, like, yo, like, like, like I was a super fan, bro. Like, when, when those conversations came about, it was just hard. Now I'm just thinking, like, my last three games, I've had 37, 34, and 43 points. I scored 100, above 100 points in my last three games. My last game, I was I was hurt and I had 43. And it's like, yo, you're performing at a high level. I don't know what's making me doubt going to these trials. Is it because they can say no again? I know people are gonna be like, well, this could be your break. This could be you. This could be exactly what you wanted. But it's just like, it's like knowing that this is the prettiest girl, the girl that you wanna love. This is the girl that you have you have envisioned for your whole life but you never had the confidence to tell her how you felt about her. And then one day you go up to her and you tell her like, she's like, no, I'm sorry. You just not it. Like, can I live with the, can I live with the response of, Matt, you're not good enough for our worst. I'm tired of hearing, oh, no, you, no you're good. Keep it up. No, you're good. Someone to get you. Someone to pick you up, you know? It's it's hard watching the NBA now and seeing niggas that's playing that's younger than me, you know what I mean? Like, damn, the niggas 18, 19, 20, jumping through hoops, it's just like, 
I got I belong in a facility. I belong. I've killed so many people, bro. I don't want to be one of those guys that's, yo, he was nice. He could have played in the league, you know? You know, one of my best friends, he's in the league right now. And and I'm so, so, so happy for him, bro. I'm so happy for him. I would never say, how did he make it over me? This nigga's a dog, a talent. Gerard Terry, that's my boy. It's just, it's just crazy. He knows how I feel about my mental and stuff like that. And, where I stand with these things. But a real heartbreak is not knowing if she keep going or, or if you had enough. Because of me pursuing basketball, I never had a family. I never had a strong relationship or build. I've been so focused. And God has opened up other doors, many doors, for me to talk to you guys and express myself. You know, you ask me, do I feel like a failure? Kinda. You ask me, do I feel like, you know, I could've went harder? I don't know how. I don't know how I could've went any harder. Like I was, I was literally curled up in my bed, dying, because my body was fighting. It was pushing off the wrong toxins in my body because it was trying to protect itself. I was running the city, running around. Like, it's cool winning local championships and city shows. I'm so young. Stressed out, bro. You know, it's easy to talk to you guys about what I think you guys should do with your life. But, you know, taking advice from myself is like, you know, stick with it. Stay up. It's hard. It's, it's really hard, but... I don't know. My mind doesn't want to quit, but my body's like, yo. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just woke up this morning, I went to talk to you guys about this. You know, some of you probably not, didn't watch this all the way through. For those that did, I appreciate you for sticking around. Mind you, I think about this a mile, a, mile a second. Every day I could be talking about somebody talking to somebody about something and I'm thinking about it like damn, you're not getting I don't think if I have a cup of liquor or if I if I drink a the soda or like if I eat the wrong sweets, like, when it's time for me to perform I won't perform. Yeah, I think, bro. I think. I don't know, man, it's crazy. Where I'm at mentally is crazy. I got a game today I'm debating on going to. My body feels pretty good. My leg feels better. I don't know, y'all. Yeah. I apologize for talking your ear off, but... I like talking to you guys through here. You know, sometimes you could just talk and not, not get a response. It's just tough. It's tough. I don't know what's scary is because I don't know what to do next. Yeah, we are, but hope you guys have a blessed one, man. Embrace your demons. Embrace them flaws. You might not understand why now, but you will later. Copy. Talk to you guys later. Sorry for talking your ear off. Royalty, over and out.